You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Damien Marley. Damien Marley. What's <laughs> yes, up, yes. my brother? Yeah, man, good. good How are good. you? I'm good, thank you. You? Yes, sir. Blessings, man. Yeah, man, good. I never seen somebody's hair go. I never seen dreads that long before. No. What? No. Uh, well, you never been. You've been in Jamaica before, though, right? Yeah, I've been in Jamaica, but I only stay on the resort. I don't leave the uh, resort. Can you tell him that Jamaica is not that bad? Uh, no, man. Jamaica good. Man. Yeah, because you're from there. Of course. But you know, when you get there, they tell you don't leave the resort. It's dangerous. Yeah, well, that's probably um. You they know. usually tell the white people that. Yeah, I mean, oh. and that's probably the resort's plan to keep you at the resort. You right. Know? Gotcha. Yeah. I think that anywhere you go, if you're not, if you're away from home, just be smart. I know some people who got right. robbed in Jamaica. I know a whole track team that got robbed in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> it was a track team. It was an Olympic track team. They was out there minding their business, and they got laid down. <laughs> all right. Well, my best friend bought a house in Jamaica, and she goes there all the time. I haven't been there yet, but she loves it. A lot of people actually have been buying houses in Jamaica lately. Yeah, man, Jamaica, Jamaica is cool, man. You know, as, as she said, if you play smart, you know, just like anywhere else on earth, you don't wander in certain territories by yourself, but you know, it's cool. Got right. you. Yeah, man. The last time I think we seen you up here, I believe you uh, just released the album with Nas. Yeah. That was a long time ago. So yeah. how did that album do? That it? was and Distant are, Relatives. Yes. Are you guys going to do more projects with each other? Well, um, we speak about it. You know, we don't really have anything scheduled at the moment, but we're, I think both of us might have the intention, you know, the ambition to do so. How did y'all hook up? Well, really, we, from when I did the Welcome to Jamrock album, I had invited him to be on one of the tracks on that album. Um... And then later on, we had a few leftover tracks that was based on Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the idea came up about for us to do an EP. So we really set about just trying to do about four or five songs together based on Africa. Mm -hmm. And then because of enjoying what we're doing, we decided to make it a full album. You know? And you actually had the proceeds from that album donated to causes in Africa? Yeah, we donated some stuff, to some money to a school in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. But I can't say the proceeds, not all the proceeds. Right, some of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. do, do you got any records left over with Hove? No. <laughs> <laughs> One and done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, so Jay Z when he came to Jamaica, uh, you guys didn't do any music in Jamaica. No, we did the recording in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and then after doing the recording, he said he wanted to come down to get some visuals in support of the recording, and so we, we lined up for to go to Kingston. So you did the new album in L.A. and in Miami. My album. Yeah. Uh yeah, between L.A., and Miami, and Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. I heard whole flew your whole family in to, to do that video. Damn there. No, man. A few of us. I was, I was on tour, so I was actually in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So they flew me from Ethiopia to Kingston with just a few of us, though. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I was they, holding Kingston. How, how was that experience, taking them around and, and letting them see everything and, and taking them on a tour of Kingston? Well, it was cool. I mean, this is the first time I'd spent so much time around him. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So very down-to-earth, um, you know, virgin. And we had some cool conversations, and I got to show him around Trenchtown, which is the area where my father grew up mm -hmm. as a young man. And kind of show him some of the family history, you know? Mm -hmm. And for him, he, he kept on saying he, f he felt like he was a kid because he, he had been listening to my father's music since he was very young, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So to be in the places where it came from, I think he had a good time, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you think your father's music can be used as a coping mechanism for, like, the times we're in now? Because it seems like the times haven't changed much from what he was talking about in his music. Yeah, I mean, he was probably ahead of his time, yeah. to tell you the truth. And definitely, I, I use it as a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. I know various other people do, so yeah, I would recommend it. Anyone. Yeah, yeah, you address that in videos and songs that you have on a new album too, just about stereotypes of people and not judging people yeah. based on not knowing them. Yes, we have a song called Nail Pan Cross mm -hmm. that is really about that. Where even in the video work we're, you know, being crucified and we have, you know, several other stereotypes being crucified to kinda show what you're talking Do about. Do you feel like people stereotype you when you go places? Yeah, I mean some of them are yeah, I mean sometimes it's kinda accurate. I mean, of course, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a business person, I love the fact that you've also invested in opening some dispensaries. Yeah. Because obviously that's something that you would know about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as a business person and as somebody who has been involved with marijuana since, you know, my culture is really deep in marijuana, as you know, and as a Rasta, you know, so we're proud to be involved in that industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we're right in, in L.A. or? Detroit, L.A., Vegas? Colorado. Okay. So far, these are two places that we have business going and, you know, looking to other places. You actually yeah. turned a, a prison into a, a farm. Yeah. That's, oh, that's amazing. Dope. Yeah. We're in that's yeah. in California. Wow. Yeah. Come on. I was just, yes, that's that's great. I mean, you know, of course that once hosts people for marijuana. Mm -hmm. So that's like redemption. Right. And that kind of kid. Yeah. And they said it's gonna be what legalized by next year, so that's gonna be crazy. Yeah. 
It's we, funny because when I went to Jamaica last, it wasn't legal in Jamaica. And in my head, I'm like, oh, you can't smoke weed in Jamaica? That's crazy, But yeah. then when I came back again, the next time, it was legal. Is yeah, it legal in Jamaica? It's it is. decriminalized in Jamaica. Oh. Mm. Well, that's not really legal. Well, what does right? that mean? Well, like, you don't go to jail if the police, you know, find you with herb. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Once upon a time, they could lock you up. So now they, they don't, you know, get a fine or whatever, you know. You don't just smoke for recreational reasons, though. It's, it's deeper, right? Well, it's part of our spiritual sacrament, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? In that kind of way, you know, but I mean, really you look at that, it's kind of still recreational, you know. And you've been very vocal about the fact that it also is beneficial for people for health purposes, as yeah. we know. I mean, with it becoming legal, you find that there's a lot of research being done, you know, and we can see that there's a lot of benefits um, on the medical side of it. Even if you check out, even now on my social media, we put up some testimonies from different people who have different illnesses, from cancer to Crohn's disease to, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff. Parkinson's, all kinds of stuff. Do you like that shit they grow in L.A., man? L.A. too strong, man. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. He's yeah. like, hello, I have a business there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, when I go, like, if I go to the Caribbean, I can smoke it if it's right off the bush, like, but I can't smoke what they making them dispensaries and all that. Man. Yeah, well, it gets stronger still, but, I mean, you know, I'm a fan. You know, it was amazing because I just was in Jamaica now. When I was there last year and they told me you couldn't smoke, but then last time I went, we went to um, a party like on the beach and they just sell it there. Like they sell cigars, they sell candy, and they sell weed. Yeah. They just come up to you and they like have yeah, weed yeah. for you to just buy now. Yeah. It's so different in such a short period of time. Yeah, man, for true. <laughs> now tell us about this album, Stony Hill. Well, this is my first solo album in 12 years. Um, you know, we've been working on it diligently for the last uh, two years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, long awaited for my fans, you know what I mean? Um, that's, that's basically what I can say about it. I mean, I'm, I'm trying a bit more singing on this album than I usually do. Mm-hmm. A bit more Roots tracks also. Um, not so much collaborations this time around. You have your brother on there, though. I have my brother on there, Stephen Marley, mm-hmm. and Major Major, who is the son of Bounty Killer, mm-hmm. Jamaican legend. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's just, you know, like I said, it's my effort, my first effort in 12 years as a solo artist. Well, it took so long. You just was laying low or? Working on other stuff. The gotcha. album with Nas. I did an album with Mick Jagger and a group of other musicians. I produced a few compilation albums on behalf of my family and, you know, stuff like that. How, how, how do you feel about uh, China buying up so much of Jamaica right now? Well, Chinese, rather. I mean, you can see where there's development happening in the country. For example, you know, the highway and all that stuff that, they just built in like a, Was it a seven hundred million dollar highway? Or something? Yeah, or something like that. You yeah. know, which is good for the country at large. But I mean, in in the same breath, people say that we're selling the country out to mm-hmm. the Chinese. You know what I mean? In that kind of sense. So we're still, you know, we're still watching to see how it all works out. You know what I mean? You think it'll ultimately help the country? I hope so. All right. Yeah. Because you don't want it to be like a gentrification thing where they end up pushing, try to push all the, the Jamaicans out. No, but I mean, this is the way the world works now. You know, the world is a, is a open global marketplace is really how the world works. So we have to be a part of the world. So, you know, that's it. All right. And High Times Magazine, you also invested in High Times. Yeah, yeah. That magazine's been around for, I can't even long think time. about how long. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. So now what happens? Are you going to like revamp it? How involved are you with, with the magazine? No, when I, I'm not so deeply creatively involved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Of course, if we have any suggestions, we can always voice our opinions, but, but it, it, that wouldn't be my responsibility. Okay. Yeah. What it, do you think about artists like, you know, I, I know like Drake and, and your Tory Lanes that, that take the culture? Are, are you cool with that? or? Yeah, I'm cool with it. Um, of course, we'd love to see the artists pay homage. Mm-hmm. You know, and definitely we'd love to see them even work with some Jamaican talent in terms of either producers or artists or whatever. But um, in general, I'm cool with it. It's, it's a good indicator that people are fans of our music. Mm-hmm. The best form of flattery is imitation, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm cool with it. And yeah, they had Drake's this little tweet floating around that said, uh, see, see Drake, Jay-Z actually went and got a real Jamaican to do Jamaican on his songs oh, yeah. as opposed to trying Drake, to do it himself. Drake, somebody, Drake, Drake spent a lot of time color. in Jamaica, didn't he? Like, I, I know I've heard that he Drake was... had a couple of artists too. I don't know. I've never yeah. met him in us. I couldn't. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, and I wanted to know, you know, with the Marley name so big, it seems like the name is being used by so many different people. How, how can y'all stop it? It seems like it's not being, it's not you being used legitly. Everything is Marley. Marley this, Marley that, Marley um, seasoning, Marley t-shirts. Marley well, that. a lot of them, a lot of them might be legit that mm-hmm. you're speaking about. I mean, we do have the, the rights to stop, you know, anyone who is using the name illegitimately in that kind of case. So, um, you know, but then what you find out now is that a lot of us, for example, my brother Rowan, you know, he, he, he has Marley coffee. He right. came up with Martin, you know, that's, uh, that's his line of business. So you find that a lot of my brothers and sisters have different ambitions outside of music gotcha. and they, they look into different ventures, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, the new album, Stony Hill, comes out on the 7th. Oh, it's out right now. Yes, the new sir. album, Stony Hill, is out right now. Make sure you get it. Do you feel any pressure to do a record like Jam Rock? Like, does the label say we need another Jam Rock because it was such a big record? Not really. No, I mean, where it came onto that record, I don't think anybody really predicted that it would have been as big as it was, and especially to get the amount of airplay that it got. Got a lot of airplay. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, kind of took off on its own. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think, uh, I mean, me, myself, I'm not really trying to. I know I can't duplicate that moment. Because it wasn't, it's, you know? not, it's not a particular dance record. No. It's just a, it's like a hard record that yeah. just rocks, you know? Yeah, it's a street record that really blew up, you know what I mean, in that kind of way. So, I know that's, that's, not, that's not the everyday thing, you know what I mean? So, for me, like I said, again, we're just, I'm just trying to make music openly, and if it come, it come, you know? When, when you see the turmoil that's going on in America, like as far as with the administration we got in the White House, does that inspire you to want to... Make more music? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, my music inspired a lot by the news and, you know, just what's happening in our society in general, you know. Of course, being a Jamaican, what happened in Jamaica is the most important to me. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we do get influenced by what happens here, so, yeah. You've All been right. doing a lot with artists in Jamaica, like you said, compilation albums. Who should we be looking out for? Because I know we're so late here on what's big in Jamaica, but I know you guys can predict, like, okay, this is what the biggest artist in Jamaica right now, who's going to be... Well, I mean, you know, the, I mean, I don't know if you know the popular set right now. I mean, you have youths like Alkaline and, mm -hmm. um, you know, those that set of youths who is popular right now. Mm -hmm. right. I'm kind of more working with the, some of the more conscious, um, you know, younger artists. Kabaka Pyramid, in general, is one of the artists I'm working with personally. Chronix just released his album recently, mm -hmm. which is a pretty good effort also, um, you know. But these are all of our young talent coming up from Jamaica right now. Right. So, you know? Yeah, man. We like to get the inside scoop, so. Well, yeah, I get you. <laughs> well, the album is out right now. Make sure you get you pick it up. And we appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Me. It's Damien Marley. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.